This is your 20-minute podcast, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. This is your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, and our special guest today is Reginald Walton, otherwise known as Mr. Reggie. How are you, young man? I am doing great, sir. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You bet. Where are you talking to me from? I am actually located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. So you got snow, ice. What do you got back there? Uh, it's, well, the, the snow and everything is kind of melting, so that's good. Um, it's still kind of chilly, but... No, no snow, no ice for right now. There you go. Yeah, I'm in Colorado, and we'll have 71 tomorrow, so just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we won't get 71, though. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, Reginald Walton, uh, or known as Mr. Reggie, is the author of Motivation, What Is It and How to Keep It, Love at First Sight, Online Dating Principles, and the children's book, My Daddy's Hat, published by Orange Hat Publishing. So you're uh, you're dipping your toes in all kinds of different uh, family and relationship things, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's definitely a passion of mine. Good for you. Good for you. Tell me a little bit about My Daddy's Hat. I'm really curious about that. Oh, okay. So my daddy's hat is a children's book. It um, it teaches children pretty much. Um, they learn their colors, and they help to um, develop their speech. The point of the book is that different hats represent different occupations of the fathers, and it pretty much displays just how important men are, fathers are, to their children, and how children look up to you and want to follow. Your, your path, they see what you're doing, they, they see how hard you work, and they do, they, they see that and they act on it. And so my daddy's hat is children who, they see their dad as a firefighter, as a police officer, as a cook, and they want to wear the hat that their daddy's wearing. Wow, I love that. I've never heard of that concept before, and I know in our church is an example that, you know, the pastors are always talking about the dads really need to show up, not only for the families, but, but especially for the kids. And to have your, uh, your illustrations like that in my daddy's hat is, uh, I'm impressed, man. Good on you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I'm excited. Yeah, good for you. Uh, where can folks get your daddy's hat? It's actually available at your local bars and over stores. And also online, whether it be Amazon, CreateSpace, or Barnes & Noble. Terrific, terrific. Okay, I know we're supposed to be talking about relationships and, and family, but I just couldn't pass up my daddy's hat. That really caught my interest, so I'm, I'm glad we were able to elaborate on that. I think that'll speak to a lot of folks. It certainly does to me. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It was very inspirational. Good for you. What inspired you to do that? And then we'll change course. Of course. I am currently... Uh, as you know, the relationship coach, and I'm a professor, right? So I deal with, I guess, family all the time, even as a professor. And when I talk to some of my students, and it's like, okay, guys, what do you want to do like with your degrees? And it's kind of like, well, I knew college is what I should do, so I'm doing it. I'm like, okay, but what do you plan on doing to further it, though? And a lot of students didn't have any answers. And as a as a coach... Um, regarding relationships, sometimes you, you get so content and so comfortable with the relationship, you forget who's watching. Wow. That that she, your daughter or your, your son is watching you. And so as, as I realized that in coaching so many families and couples, I realized how important that is for parents to always keep that in the forefront, to understand that, you know, your son is watching you. Your daughter's watching you. And so that it really just inspired me to just capture kids and to um, get them to notice the importance of the hat. But I'm aware that parents are the ones who buy the book. Usually they're the ones who read it to the children. So hopefully it inspires them while reading it. That's perfect. Perfect. Good for you. So you're in addition to a professor. Where do you teach at? I teach at... Um, Brian at the Stratton College. Okay, and what subjects? 
normally business um, classes is the um, subject that I tend to have courses in. Nice, nice. And then in your coaching life, uh, you wear many hats, obviously. Um, you talk to folks about balance in relationships, uh, getting over bad dating histories and experiences and uh, long-term relationships, what it takes to maintain them and all those kinds of things. How long have you been a, uh, been a coach in, in helping families? Honestly, Dave, I have been passionate about this since I was 14. I started doing it professionally three years ago. Okay. But uh, there was a tragedy that happened to me very early in life that caused me to want to take my life and uh, at least attempt to. Right. right? And uh, my mom stopped me. And the purpose behind me being that depressed and that low was because I felt girls didn't like me. All of my friends had girlfriends and things like that, and I just felt girls didn't like me. And once I had recovered from such low esteem, confidence uh, in my life, I was just so intrigued on how do you get someone to like you and to like you forever. So I started asking questions, reading books, and just really, really placing a, a huge interest on it. But after so many years of doing it and so many people coming to me, I decided to do it professionally three years ago. Good for you. Hey, isn't it interesting, and it, it always baffles me in a good way, how tragedy can lead to something so positive and touch so many people's lives if we're if we're able to pull out of it like you did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I consider the many stories of the Bible and how many people have how they come from so you know the the pain uh, tragedies and as you mentioned has been able to overcome. Yeah, and you're right. The Bible's. I mean. You only have to look at Job, and you pretty well are done right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, so when you do, you meet with families. Do you meet with singles? How does how does your process work in helping people? Um, normally, what happens is I tend to do both. I usually they contact me, and it depends on the issue. And when it comes to couples. I like to meet with them separately simply because there are things that they will, information that they would tell me, but not in front of their significant other, but can be very important into healing the relationship. So I, I tend to meet with them individually before I meet with them together. And it's all involving um, healing the relationship and um, the marriage as opposed to singles. Singles are normally faced with getting through or over something. Yeah. I'm going, um, I've been hurt, I find it hard to trust again, or I don't know how to date in 2016, <laughs> 2017, I don't know how to date in the modern era, or I'm not sure what I even want anymore, or I'm too busy, or so they're, they're going through individual tasks that sure. I helped them through. Nice. It's, I mean, the world has changed so much, obviously, and in dating in the last 15, 20, I mean, my wife and I, we met online 13 years ago, you know? And, uh, so yeah, it's, so I'm, I'm a big fan, but I'm totally objective, of course. Um, <laughs> but it makes me think, and I understand, I understand part of what you're saying, I believe is you have to like yourself first. You have to love yourself first. You have to respect yourself first in order to be healthy enough to to really grow a relationship and if if meeting with the individual partners of a of a marriage can help build their individual esteem then i'm thinking that goes a long way to helping the family right exactly that's exactly true you have to you have to be um you have to place yourself in a position to like yourself to love yourself not too long ago i explained to you how i was so low that I didn't even feel like I should live. Right. And that position in life was the very reason why girls didn't like me. Sure. They didn't like me. Right. I didn't like me. It wasn't until I got out of that where I decided to like me. I decided to love me. I decided to learn what I like and who I am, where then the opposite sex was there was like, who is this guy? I want to get to know him. Um, he appears to be doing things. He appears to have fun with life. 
And so that was definitely a lesson for me. So you definitely have to be in a position to like and love yourself before expecting others to like and love you at the level that you feel you deserve. And that's the key, isn't it? The feeling, the, the place that you deserve, because I think, at least in my experience with my own baggage and, and other people that I know, it seems like whatever level our self-esteem is, that's who we're attracted to. True story. You know? And so if you get into a place to where you're really crazy about yourself, for lack of a better term, uh, just like you found out, the world changes. Oh, my gosh. Right. It's tremendous. Literally overnight. Yeah. Overnight. You know, people can tell. One of the things I'm intrigued by, and I don't, I don't know if you address this or not, but it seems like when you were 14 and, and going through all the things that you went through, my sense is there must have been some bullying going on. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, like in the sense of how kids, kids can be mean. Yeah. Right? And so, although I was 14, I never viewed the, the other girls as being 14 for whatever reason. I felt that they should know better. I felt that they should know what they wanted. I, I kind of viewed them as, you know, you should know how life goes. And and that's definitely not the case. Right. So they they were more so kind of just like, well, Reggie's cool, but he's boring. There you go. Yeah. He's fun and and because of that, you know, that was the word I'm gonna say around the school. It was, he's he's fun. He's cool, but he's not fun. You know, he, he's not sure of himself. Yeah. And you know, as 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 you know, like I do. When it comes to women and attracting women, one of the top characteristics is confidence within yourself. Yep. You must have that. And so it, it was definitely a correlation, I'm going to say, of maybe an emotional bullying. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't say that they did it intentionally. It was just, I, I'm going to put the blame on me. I, I just wasn't sure or confident on myself. And because I weighed so much on myself and I placed so much on myself, People can sense it, and it just wasn't an attractive trait. Yep, absolutely right. I guess what made me think of that is bullying is is such a topic of conversation. It's in the news every day. It's every school has some level of it, and so it made me wonder if if you had the opportunity to do any counseling with with parents or kids in the in the bullying arena because it's unbelievably scary. Some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I have. I have, actually, and oftentimes I have not dealt with the physical bullying simply because that's just not my field. Right. Um, that's not what I, um, you know, that's not my expertise per se, but I have dealt with those who, with kids, and they have been bullied emotionally as far as being called ugly, as far as, um, you know, not being as popular and as outgoing as some of their classmates may be. And they can't find a quote unquote prime date. No one likes them. And so they kind of feel low. And for that, for that student, and I kind of handle it the way I dealt with me. And for that, you just, you have to put yourself in a position where you understand what you're good at. I always ask these kids, like, what are you, what are you good at? If someone were to say, if I want to come to you to do anything great, what would you say you do great? Right, and whatever that thing is, do that. Focus on that, and the more you you focus, you build your confidence because you realize you're good at something, you're great yeah. at something. For me, it was basketball. Whenever I, I played basketball, um, and I, I did play college basketball for a while, so I was decent. It put me in a, a different mindset of the confidence that I had shown on the basketball court. And for anybody, any one of us, we all have a talent, skill a gift in something. And oftentimes when when dealing with these high school kids and asking them what that was, for example, there were athletes, there were those who were good at some type of drawing or art per se, and there were also those who were just talented as far as singing, songwriting, instrument playing, and things like that. And I, I told them, you know what, put yourself in a position where you're the best at the, you're the greatest at that. 
you focus on it, you go home and you work on your talent, you work on your gift, and those other things will come into play. And it, it helps that I've experienced something similar to what they have, too, that they actually listen and follow. And sometimes the family don't always call me back. Right. So, but I'm assuming that the call, <laughs> me not getting the call back means we're okay. Yeah, no news is good news, right? right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't I don't want to give license to every parent and grandparent out there to become a, a therapist or a counselor, but it seems to me that if you sit down and have a conversation with your kid or your grandkid and just ask them that one question, it seems that would open up a whole possibility of conversations. Oh, and they light up. Right? The faces light up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Those faces light up. And of course, there's so many other variables as far as upbringing and the, the household, how that is ran. And right. There's so many other variables, but for the person that the, the child is emotionally like down on themselves, once they discover, I'm great at this and I know it. I know it. I may not be popular. I may not be the best looking. Right? Our family may not have the most money. However, however, when it comes to this particular thing, I am the the best. And face light up. They they understand that they're good at something, and that correlates and that bleeds over into other areas in life. I got to tell you, man, that's exactly my experience in high school fifty years ago. I hated school. I wasn't very popular. My two subjects were band and typing especially music, and my instructor, and I was playing the clarinet just because that's what we did, and then my my instructor came up to me one day and he said, what do you think about moving over to the baritone sax? I think you would be just amazing on that. And I lit up like a Christmas tree and moved up to first chair and played college, and I mean, it took my confidence through the roof from that one experience, so I totally get it, man. Yeah, it's life-changing. Oh, my gosh. Did it for me. Hey, if folks want to reach out to you, are there ways that they can reach out to you and get some information, talk to you? What's what's the best way to have a conversation? The, the, there are two ways. One way is via my website, which is um, mrreggie.com, Mr. being M-I-S-T-E-R, Reggie, R-E-G-G-I-E.com, or via email, which is Reggie at MrReggie.com. Cool. And I notice on your, I love your logo, man. It's a caricature of you, but when it's in Mr. Reggie, there's a crown above the I that dots the I in Mr. And there's some red lips that dot the I in Reggie. And then underneath it says, love is for everybody. Help is here. That just, that's powerful. I love that a lot. Thank you very much, sir. And that's another thing, Dave, if you don't mind. Like, when it comes to love, I've realized it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter ethnicity, your economic status, educational level. It doesn't matter how tall, short, big, little, muscular, fat. It it doesn't matter. Everybody that wants that companionship, that fellowship, that love with someone. Everybody. Amen. Mr. Reggie, thank you so much. Uh, really enjoyed That's like the quickest 20 minutes in history, dude. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You've been listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower and our special guest, Mr. Reggie. Be sure to check us out and like us on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, don't forget to download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. That's audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast for your free audiobook. And thanks for listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower.